The eyes of the grasses of the sky were voice. Fashion said that so exact. Beautiful, ready for the dual world. I hope to be silent. How do you know the world of drops is on the floor? And thank you for your kind words about death. I have so many friends as a stalker. I think our relationship is really much more unique. You're the only one. The other small skinny explosive violent and yellow which is a liver ailment. The former Julia Domina is a sex with probably some hint of moist lavender.
drifting in your window when you shut your eyes. I feel like a little bug hanging out in your dusty web for you to come back and eat me. I'll love you until I grow old and die waiting. Parasite, Gassianus, my myself can't see as anything other than love of that. This parasite planted its prick in the compressed kingdom of Emesa, which wasn't at first a kingdom but a priesthood. And all of it, kingdom, priesthood, priest, and priest king at its head, swore if they'd been imbued with molten matter and were made of gold and descended straight from the sun. But one day this priesthood, which manipulated precepts and mumbled and principled rather as one handles, haphazardly and without any skill, hints or gussets. This priesthood, which perhaps had in it something divine, but no longer knew where that something might be relocated, priesthood in which the divine was crushed, reduced to the Lebanon, Palestine, Cappadocia, Cyprus, Arabia, and Babylon, or just as the solar plexus was crushed inside our Western organisms, this cow priesthood of Amesa, cow meaning woman, and womanish meaning cowardly, malleable, insulted, and enslaved, which didn't know how to impose its visible sovereignty by force of arms, but felt comfortable with an atmosphere of ease and anarchy, and which knew how to profit from the disintegration of the kingdom of the Seleus Seleucidae, that 160 years later succeeded the far more important disintegration of the empire of Alexander the Great by declaring itself independent. From mother to son, the priest of Emesa, who for a thousand handed down the kingdom and the bloodline of the son. From mother to son, That picture you sent me two weeks or so ago of you in the mirror, dashing. And reading that John Ritchie book, City of Night. The standpoint of generation itself was considered the primogenitor. I stress primogenitor. It means mother is father, that it's, a, that it's the mother who is the father. 
feminine which engenders the masculine, and this must be reconciled with the masculine sex of blood. Those who worship it from ever becoming couples. Nevertheless, in Syria, and especially amid the Sincerimids, it is the daughter who joins the priesthood, whereas the son joins nothing. But to return to the Bastiani, of whom Heliogobulus is the most notable, and Bastianus the founder, there is an appalling hiatus between the lines of the Bastiani and of the Sincerimids, and this hiatus is marked by a usurpation and a crime which, without interrupting it, divert the lineage of the son. Now since among the Sancisiramids, the mother was the father, for the Roman historian to deem it practice parasite, Bessianus would have to have killed his mother. Yet because the succession passed not to a woman but a man, and despite the priesthood's being female, it was nonetheless the man who was entrusted to protect it. Hence I myself think Bastianus must have killed the person protecting it, and that he killed his real father, his father by nature, and his father in society. He was thus of masculine blood. He was on the masculine side of the solar bloodline. But the fact of having real established once again the supremacy of the male over the female, and of masculine over feminine, scarcely seems to have sorted things out, because with him the downfall begins. And in history, it's hard to find a more perfect aggregation of crimes, depravity, and cruelty than this family's, wherein the men assumed all the malice and weakness, and the women the virility. On that score, one could say that Heliogobulus was shaped by women, that his thinking was done according to the will of two women, and that whenever he wished to think for himself, whenever his male pride, nettled by the energy of his wives, of his mother, who all slept with him, wanted to manifest itself, we know what the result was. I'm not judging what resulted as history may judge it. This anarchy, this debauchery, please me. They please me from the point of view of history and from the point of the view of Heliogobulus. But at the moment when I take up the story, Heliogobulus wasn't yet born. The kings of Amasa, those little women kings, who wanted simultaneously to be both man and woman, like a megabizus of the temple of Ephesus, who, while a man, bound up his own prick in order to sacrifice as a woman, but turned into the embedded sacrificial stone in front of which he would sacrifice standing, had long since entrusted their freedom to the hands of Rome. Of the ancient kingdom of Amathia, there remains only this temple, gloomy and voluminous. The control of trade, war, protection of worldly goods all belong to the old troopers of Rome. As for the rest, each Syrian could believe whatever he wished, and the religion of the sun remained modeled here and there with devotions to the moon, with an admixture of moonstones, fish, rams, and some room for spare hawks, but no cocks. No, it doesn't seem that the cock had any great standing in those particular rites. The temple of Elagabalus and Amasa was for several centuries the center of spasmodic attempts to gouge the gluttony. Will you still be infatuated with me when I am a dead boy? Outcast worshiper, it must be said that the breath which was in chaos fell in love with its principle, and through this forward motion, this kind of idea which does away with darkness, a conscious desire was born. And in the sun itself, there are living sources, an idea of chaos reduced and completely eliminated. However, in the human body, what represents the reality of this breath is not pulmonary respiration, which would be to this breath what the sun is in its physical aspect is to the reproductive principle. But this sort of vital hunger, changing, opaque, 
whose currents sweep across the nerves and battle with the intelligent principles of the brain. And these principles, in their turn, recharge the pulmonary breath and confer upon it all their powers. Nobody could claim that the lungs which restore life aren't under the command of a breath conveyed by the brain. And the head of Elagabalus, god of the Mesa, was kept very busy for all time. In 179, however, when Septimius Severus in Syria takes command of the Fourth Scythian Legion, nothing is left of the noble Phoenician cosmogony peddled by Sankon Niaton except one black stone fallen from the sky. This monolith, this pointed block whose guardian gifts Bessianus has appointed himself, but which is actually in the safekeeping of his two daughters, the voluptuous Syrian pair. Julia Domna and Julia Mesa. Septimius Severus is already old and tired. The desert sands have long scorched his foot soles and gnawed his horned heels. He is a widower two or three times over, but scarcely has he disembarked than he decides on taking a wife, and to do so consults the official registry lists. In these registers, he finds the moon, i.e. the moonstone, i.e. Julia Domna, now Domna is Diana, Artemis, Ishtar, and also Proserpina, the force of dark feminine, the dark in the third region of the earth, woman incarnate in hell, and who never reascends from hell. But Julia Domna has a horoscope that destines her one day to be wife to an emperor, and he decides to wed Julia Domna because of her horoscope. Besides, Moonstone Julia Domna, horoscope, and the hydromantic oracles before who whom imperial horoscopes are cast, are all in accord. I'm saying, a line in the sand, a tough row, a dry furrow, my wrecked heart, <laughs> my wrecked heart lies down in folds. Sloppy seconds of first class.
looking back and it's particularly precise and particularly conscientious because afterwards the horoscope was cast and now it's the Julia Domina that she'd be queen one day. <coughs> and it's known that 30 years later, Varius Marcellus, putative father of Heliogobulus, caused to be erected in the oracle's honor a votive stale upon whose stone was Would you still love me if you came back and I was a fat girl? You are the wind beneath my wings. To peel you like a mango, suck the sweet yellow fruit. Every breath, a magnificent bird. I build my house for you. And a considerable number of temples seem to be placed there only to illustrate this war. These rites, these anomalies, vie with each other for splendor.
top picture, it's really fantastic. It'd be even better high resolution poster size. Is it cum dripping? While praying, he selects a brazen instrument, which emits a loud and high-pitched sound. The man does not sleep at all. Should he let himself succumb to drowsiness, it is said that a scorpion arises to rouse him from the painful state. Such was the punishment consequent upon this sleep. There the scorpion is held to be sacred and divine. The temple faces the rising sun. In form and structure, it resembles the temples constructed at in Ionia. It's here we get onto the scent of water. If instead of giving us an external description of the temple through our voice, and his description is never more external than when he appears to gain access to and penetrate its utmost secrets. Lucian had had the slightest curiosity about principles. He would have examined the temple colonnades as to the extra-human origin of these female sexes in stone which comprise the ornamentation thereon. This is the very principle of Ionian architecture. Potential for anarchic sea change. When you get used to one grammar, you begin to perceive another, which was always present, but mute. One can smell a pleasant odor there, similar to that which they say perfumes Arabia. The further one has journeyed, the more one inhales this delicious fragrance. And on departure, it leaves one not clothing, is deeply steeped in it, and thus one There is a sense to the chaotic flow of things that has not yet been opened. Music comes out of nothing, never to embody it. Yet its capacity for nuance somehow has a hold on the feeling of that inchoate moment before we speak. What is the feeling of the rough boundary between the changes that sustain the continuity and conformity of the center and the rhapsodic chaos of the hinterlands, singing the crazy folk songs of nomads free of all memory? I love you so much before words, how you dance, on the limb of a decision that never comes. another person applies the same test from another side, the statue does not fail to do their part. Between these two statues may be seen a third, of gold also, but having nothing in common with the other two. This is the Semion. She wears on her head a golden dove. On entering to the left of the temple, one finds a throne reserved for the sun, but the figure of this god is not there. The sun and moon are only two deities whose images they do not show, for they say there is no purpose in making statues of deities who show themselves every day in the sky. The cult of Baal and Emesa, represented by the vigorous prick of Alagabal, the black god, paralleled through its complex and overloaded rites, 
the cult of Tanith Astarth, the moon, which held sway a few kilometers away in the fragrant depths of the temple of Hierapolis. There it was in this temple consecrated to woman's vagina, to her deified sex, that a sweating and bearded Apollo would emerge during the main festivals and would consecrate his oracles through the voice of the high priest, advancing or retiring upon the shoulders of his bearers. This Apollo, all in gold, with a thick fringe of black horse hair fixed beneath his chin, arrives borne on men's backs, carried by a dozen or so tottering bearers who could scarcely manage to support his weight. The crowd bows down. The incense. Mail for you today. Grease up that needy dick of yours and imagine that you're shooting a thick, hot blow down the back of my throat. be careful to take part. The what for the valleys and the invitation to mutilation is for the majority of the people what for fornication. While the new virgins are sacrificing their freshly attained virginity upon the altar of the moon, their devout mothers getting while you sit on my toilet in your underwear, smoking. It's my deepest adult fantasy about intimacy or something. here and feel like I'm home. I'm giving LA one more year. I think you're tops. I'll sit on the toilet only if you fuck that rubber pussy while you're at the top. Sacred love. Such amorous explosions last only a short time. The women soon leave the corpses of these men garbed in the female attire they have assumed during their fatal rapes. This noted, we
things don't flow and women don't pee? Will you break dozens of eggs over me before you fuck my lights out? Will you suffocate me with Wonder Bread? Will you vomit your half-digested burrito in my face? Or is that too nasty? Keep up the sweet talk. Nothing disheartened this extraordinary woman. When war was off, poetry was back. And during this time, her sister was there under her thumb, and her daughters too, through whom she would perpetuate the race of the sun. Year 204 during the your flattery will blow me up, I hope. Your last communication was a month ago. I know it's perverse and being insanely self-indulgent. Surrounding the tiny kingdom of Amath, ruled over by Heliogabalus, is the Syria of white deserts. It would seem important, nevertheless, to know what becomes of it. From the military viewpoint, Syria is calm. From the physical and geographical viewpoint, it is more or less identical to how it is today. Today, the Orontes, which used to rinse the walls of the temple of Amesa via a sort of diverted arm, has ceased rinsing them. Antioch is called Antioch, and Amesa is called Homs. Of the temple of the sun, nothing remains, and one might think it has vanished underground. It truly has vanished underground, for it's still there, and a mosque has been built half a stage to its right, facing the setting sun but a plain paved square covers its fabulous foundations for which nobody has ever taken a notion to dig. As for the town of Homs, it stinks like a mesa stink, since love, meat, and shit are all to be found in the open. And pastry shops are near latrines, ceremonial slaughterers beside ordinary butchers. The whole of it shouts out, spills forth, makes love, squirts poison and spur, just as we ourselves might hawk and spit. In the alleyways, taking huge rhythmic paces like those, the vast statues 
At the very instant, the Grand High Priest frantically ravages a vulture's throat and drinks its blood, intimates a theory about the alchemy alchemical transmutation of feeling is informed, informs to feeling, according to the ancient Egyptian sacred ritual. But to this notion of bloodletting and the material transmutation of forms, there corresponds an idea of purification. It has to do with isolating the very essence of any sensual ecstasy experienced momentarily and individually by the priest, so that this explosion and this rapid outburst of frenzy may return unencumbered by matter to the first principle from which it's been born. Then there are the innumerable rooms consecrated to a single action, or even to one simple gesture, with which the underbelly of the temple and its rumbling bowel is seen. The right in every sense of absolute nakedness, the right of the biting power and unforeseen Make it not, you're such a romantic. I love the things you write to me. Did Google tell you how much I love to be adored, how I love attention? I'm still curious about your impulse to go after such an androgynous bottom despite being primarily interested in getting bent over and pulled yourself? Is it a desire to get bent over and pulled by an androgynous bottom? I bet you're going to tell me that you desire everything I can offer. But is there something specific you might gain from being with a person like me? Do you want to be my slave, or do you imagine a more egalitarian dynamic between us? Or maybe you want to someone to be subservient to you. Syracuse is a black hole, but it makes this story so much better. Did you ever cruise Thornton Park's Fruit Loop or the Erie Canal Park bathrooms? Or maybe you frequented Adult World Jack-Off Boots or the Porn Theater on Erie Boulevard. Did you have a summer job at the Wegmans? Did you go to punk shows at the West Hawk Community Center? Date SU students? Spend late nights at the all-night eggplant? Break it down and trek? I could have had a harder time than I did. I had a lot of boyfriends, SU students included, and my older brother's ID. I stopped eating meat when I was 14. When I was 16, I worked at a Gianelli sausage stand at the state fair. I could never get the sausage smell out of my skin.
This triangle had on its sides a type of rampart walk with a broad parapet. And off this walkway it opened other chambers without exits toward the daylight, but where for a period of a week, equivalent to the Greek or Roman Saturnalia, dreadful slaughter waits. slip on heaven's soap cake and fall into the off-white ceramic tub of the universe, where it will rain on me. I'm laughing at your morsels, honey, twitching your tame twat. Neodama on the treasure of the Syriac priesthood. Colomantis, and queens floating in brine 